Hello everyone, welcome to the automated script, the easiest and finest way to start your automation testing. To stay up to date with my latest videos and cool automation tips, please make sure, I mean you can subscribe to my this YouTube channel. I am Mahesh and I am Senior Test Automation Architect with 14 plus years of experience in the field of software test automation. I worked in R&D department for 5 years on multiple technologies and languages. I got approved one patent and other in queue. In my current role, uh, I explore new technologies, tools in the market, also introduce them to our test processes and bring value to the organization. Also providing technical architecture, defining strategic direction for testing automation practices. Okay, so this is all. Now, let's see on my screen, you are seeing all the automation testing design patterns. Most of the time interviewer asks about which design pattern is used in your project and we all are blank. Most of the online content are fake and none of are used. Believe me, after listening till the end of this video, you are very much clear about which design pattern is used in your project. Before I go further, let me explain you what is a design pattern first. So design patterns is a solution to commonly occurring problem in the software development processes, software automation processes, software testing processes everywhere. So it is a guideline for developer automation tester to write a clean and maintainable code which improves the performance of any reusable code. Automation scripts or application with the help of design pattern you can develop a scalable automated scripts with less maintenance cost. On my screen, if you can see, there are majorly seven design patterns. So first is your record and play. It means the tools let the tester hit record and manually go through the real user actions of pre-scripted test case. So when the tester is done, the tool will have created a script that can automatically run those exact same actions automatically on your screen. Then comes your classical design pattern. So classical design requires the creation of small independent scripts that represents features, functionality, then system based and its own managed data sources. Then your structured design pattern, then your facade design pattern, then singleton design pattern, page object design pattern. The page object uh, model is widely used object design pattern for structuring automation test code. Then the complex design pattern. So artificial intelligence pattern for combining uh, Desperate sources of data provide a value to access the elements of an aggregate object sequentially without exposing its underlying representation. Okay, now, so let's see all of this detail in one by one. So we'll go with the first that is record and play. So many management are tempted by the allure of record and play testing. But don't make these tools the focus of your test automation efforts unless you have an uncommonly static user interface and a code base. The test these tools uh, produce are often outdated in few weeks because there are depending on how frequently you update your code. And teams try to make these tools useful by either recording or re-recording often or uh, just editing into their existing scripts. Both methods have major problems. So these issues uh, is that application code, especially uh, UI code, can change frequently. In that situation, record and playback test break often, negating any time savings over just going on the manual test. So record and play test also stress your network resources as they grow because record and playback tools often duplicate lines of code, images and objects each time they execute. When this duplication generates a lot of extra code, it also makes it harder to debug failing scripts, in other words. Okay. So then question comes, when should we use record and play design pattern? So mostly we said record and playback tools are useful in training because they provide automated test exposure to traditionally manual QA, uh, QA testings and don't know what code to write for a particular action. Those people can execute this uh, record and play and these tools can tell you and you don't have a memorize every method right away. And secondly, it used for extremely simple web-based application functionality, where the code base never changes a very small application. But very important note, record 
and replay should not be your only source of truth when teaching automation or automated test code. Always reach or teach the languages through the documentation or other online sources. That is very important. Now comes your classical design pattern. So classical design requires the creation of small independent scripts that represents features, functionality or module of a system based on its own managed data sources. Here we can implement design in a modular, modular way. Test are maintaining data sources where the test input and expected outputs results are stored in a separate data file and single automated script execute all those automated test cases with the multiple sets of data. The test is implemented through data tables and defined a final keywords. Classical design pattern is a programming model also where the data itself controls the flow of a program and not the program logic. It is also a model where you can control the flow by offering different data sets to the program where the program logic is some generic form of flow or a static changes. And this design pattern is very efficient. It will use to reduce the number of test code required uh, to test scenarios and data in easier and modify. It is also reliable because the changes in the data do not impact the test code. Again, question comes when to use classical design pattern. So very small application of where the test cases are not more than 100. And also application like where you are having a data entry operation, some of the form filling operations, this type of application can be uh, used or automate using the classical design pattern. Now we jump to this third that is structured design pattern. So let's click on structured design pattern. Yes. So this design pattern are all about class and object composition. Structural class creation patterns used a inheritance to compose interfaces. Structured object pattern define ways to compose object to the obtain new functionality. Implementation and abstraction through their own classes, it has an advantages like it will help you to through avoid avoiding your coupling, it achieve a decoupling. So this design pattern makes object relationship uh, to build a large system without disturbing existing implementation. And it will help you to keep it simple and clear when setting up an organized folder structure for test and reusable objects. Start with so how to implement? So start with a clean and well-planned folder structure for a new and existing team members to understand if the team structure starts to get too disorganized or a confusing. Never be afraid to refactor. Okay, it is it is an incredible opportunity to rebuild your folder structure by moving files around the way you would like to be. There are three best practices for organization of this, uh, I mean, this test in a structured design pattern way. That is first, you can create a readme file for any empty subfolder structure and the files needed for a new development. Also avoid ambiguous and potentially redundant folder files uh, and creating a reusable page objects, very important. And naming convention for folder and files using keywords related to the feature and mention coding guidelines in a again readme file this is a tree structure of test objects where every object has the same interface and again question comes when to use this so the application which has more than 500 test cases such type of application like where the um, multiple technologies involved and the application built on this there you can use the structural design pattern there comes your facade design pattern the whole idea of facade design pattern is to provide a simple and easiest way. Okay, so once I click, you can find out here. So it is a simple and easiest to use your interfaces to the larger and the more complex code like APIs or set of APIs. And the intent of this design pattern is to provide a unified interface to a set of interfaces in a subsystem. Facade defines a higher level interface that makes the subsystem easier to use. It helps you to wrap a complicated subsystem with a simpler interface. It might not be a good idea to have pattern in the name of the facade, but 
in the example i have put it in the way that let's a web driver uh, instantiation is hard coded to firefox but in real life it will be instantiated based on the some rules fasad exposes start stop and find element methods all other web driver functionality is not accessible because all those are the interfaces so it has the implementation in three different so how how we can implement this design pattern so in three different simple form identify simpler unified interface for a subsystem or component then you can design a wrapper class that encapsulate the automation code and the facade or the wrapper captures the complexity and collaboration of the component and delegates to the appropriate methods automation test code design is in a layer structure by splitting the code in layers on the basis of logic of execution business feature and data sources these are how the facade design pattern is implemented so most of the time we uh, ask where to use this facade uh, design pattern so we can use it in customer service application like departmental store apps so where you can choose a uh, multiple functions and where you can uh, work on the multiple features of the applications then next comes your single design uh, singleton design pattern so the singleton itself means uh, the object creational pattern it is a creation of pattern because it concerns itself with the creation of objects and when we say singleton it means we can create a single object it is just an object pattern because it details with the relationship between objects okay and rather than the relationship between classes and their subclasses now the what is the intent of the singleton design pattern it will guarantee that the class has only one instance and provide access to that instance only so it is one of the most simple design pattern in the terms of modeling but on the other hand this is one of the most controversial pattern in the terms of complexity of usage still where to use this uh, a singleton design pattern so i would suggest whenever there is a desktop application or we need to do the desktop application test automation there is a single object or sometimes the hardware or iot devices which we have the single object we need quite a single instance of that uh, uh, devices so there we can use the singleton design pattern for automation now next comes your page object design pattern so page object model design pattern is widely used object design pattern for structuring automation test code with this pattern you will need to design a page object class according to a particular screen you wish to automate for example for the facebook login screen you have to create a login locator file you have to create login action login verification and login test classes and can put all the ui element locators as a variable in the lo login locator class same way you can put all action uh, or top up those locators in the login action file and the verification of those automated tests is maintained in a login verification class and the single uh, liner test within the login test class so don't forget that every login test class will extend the base class where we are calling the web driver initializer class so page object design pattern also implement a page factory based implementation within itself in the page in the factory design or the factory design we have a super class with the multiple sub classes and based on a sum input we need to return a particular sub class it is often used when the class cannot anticipate the type of objects it needs to create or beforehand the test then use the method of this page object class uh, whenever they need and it will interact with any of your ui on that page so important point of the page object model uh, according to that page object model we should keep our test and element locator separately this will keep code clean and easy to understand and maintain again the page object approach makes the test automation framework programmer friendly more durable and comprehensive another important advantage of the page object repository is independent automation test keeping separate repository for page objects help us to this repository in different purposes as well now where to use this so we can use for any enterprise application or the retail software or the banking application or the e-commerce application this is widely used and heavily used in the industry uh, software industry right now as a page object design pattern last but not the least complex design pattern 
this design pattern used in very few uh, of the I mean very few organization but it is highly recommended because of its supports on multiple test automation framework and the test automation area as well. I build uh, our test automation framework on complex design pattern only within my current project. In the current era of digital transformation where the mobile, IoT, cloud, big data concepts are playing a significant role, a very less automation of test execution will be not suffice. The challenge is to design end-to-end -end test automation solution efficiently by in, uh, integrating methodologies, frameworks, accelerators, then latest technologies, virtualization tools, and the lab management solutions. So complex design pattern are used and which leads to uh, the low cost maintenance, then it will help you uh, uh, to debugging it very easy, but more skilled resources required due to multiple languages are used within it. Maintenance of test data for all other design pattern is a bit difficult, but you are due to its modular form of test data management, it is make it more easier. Integrate, it will integrate a multiple test automation framework into the overall system development is difficult. But when we talk about the complex design pattern is very uh, more easy based on the modular form of design pattern, you can integrate a different automation framework as well. It will help you to maintain and analyze all the reports at one place. Now, there are some of the best practices also on this design pattern are followed. So first is your layered architecture. When we talked about the layer architecture, it is the framework and that design should be consist of different layers and it is a loosely coupled of each other. In the middle, in the middle it should be uh, a generic layer that should be the common point of involving services and determining results. Second, it is a support for a different data structures. The design pattern should support all the data formats supported by your API, UI, or your mobile devices like JSON, XML, plain text, etc. It has its own cache implementation. There should be a provision of local cache for temporary storage of uh, any outputs and other test data. It has its own input parsing mechanism. When we talk about the mechanism, uh, the parsing mechanism, the, your API input, or UI input or your mobile input and output are relevant objects will be added help for automation engineer. Then basic validation supports. It will help you to verify your API, UI, mobile response code, response headers, other data is also on the highly preferred. Then minimal changes in the scripts due to a low maintenance cost and structured test data. It will manage your data in a structured way so that you can uh, manage it for any type of test automation like API, mobile or UI. It has its own reporting mechanism where you can manage your all structured. Also, you can maintain your own reporting also. And the importantly, it has a service validation. There should be a test that validates the existing services and the status. So we ensure that the test gets only executed if the service is reachable and responding. I am sure this automation uh, testing design pattern will help you uh, to kickstart automation within your current project. Also, it will help you to answer the design pattern question in an interview. Please leave your answer in the comment section below which topic you would like me to cover in the next video like web driver architecture. Uh, I already covered difference between Selenium, Selenium Core and web driver in my previous video or your test data management in automation testing like there are different uh, data sources which are used and uh, for the test data management in automation testing or the object repository management uh, so your web element your other objects how to manage those and uh, with the less maintenance and with the less cost so i would encourage you to please provide your comments either it's positive or negative so that it will help me in making my next video more relevant and useful for you also uh, i'm planning that uh, i'll be showcasing the best comment uh, in my next video with the name and uh, thank you for watching please make sure to subscribe to this youtube channel thanks bye